is there life elsewhere in the universe? With a cosmos so vast, uh, the answer is probably yes. But as a fellow Italian physicist has asked, uh, where is everyone? To properly answer the question on how we are looking for life elsewhere in the solar system and beyond, we have gone to the Natural History Museum in London to speak to experts about the hands-on and some of the hands-off ways we are looking for aliens in the cosmos. So my name is Caroline Smith. I'm Head of Collections here at the Natural History Museum. I'm a planetary scientist actually by training and I'm the science lead for this exhibition. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, how we search for life? Uh, what are the kind of signs that we look for either if uh, we send mission out there or if we use telescopes? Yeah, so really what we're doing when we're looking for life, we're not looking necessarily for direct evidence for life. Well, some, some sometimes we are, but really what we're doing with the missions that we have exploring places like Mars currently, or the missions that are being sent to the icy moons of Jupiter and Saturn, and even with things like the James Webb Telescope, we're looking for that information that tells us about the chemistry of those places, the chemical conditions and the physical conditions, either now or in the past. So obviously we have two uh, rovers, NASA rovers currently operating on Mars, and those are tooled up with scientific payload that is specifically designed to look for those sort of chemical and physical biosignatures of potential Mars life. So we're looking for those chemical, physical clues, those fingerprints to see whether there was the, the physical and the chemical additions for life to start. First of all, would you like to introduce yourself and what you do here at the Natural History Museum? Yeah, I'm Sinead. I'm the exhibition lead on this project. This is an incredible tangible exhibition. We touched meteorites, uh, even from the Moon and Mars. So why was it important to make it so hands-on? Yeah, it's really important because space is something that is really exciting and mysterious and distant. But actually, when we're thinking about life and where it might exist beyond our solar system, we actually need to think about the stuff that's there. And so getting hands on, being able to touch a piece of the moon, touch a piece of Mars, uh, smell the surfaces of different worlds in our solar system and interact with lots of games, um, like driving a little Mars rover, really important in, in um, helping people understand the kind of science that's happening and to get up close with those different places in space. So, you know, when I'm looking into a Martian meteorite, I'm not looking for little bugs or little microbes crawling around in that rock. That's not what I'm doing. But what I'm doing is I'm looking at the composition of the minerals. I'm looking at the way those minerals are put together. I'm looking to see whether there's evidence that that rock has been interacting with water because of course liquid water is a key thing you need for life. So I'm looking at all of those different pieces of evidence to put together a picture of what Mars was like, the, the, the geology of Mars to answer these bigger questions. So it's not, as I said, I'm not looking for squiggly worms in the rocks, although some of my colleagues do that, but I don't do that. It's looking for that indirect evidence that all adds up to try and show us that Mars was a real habitable environment early in its history. And we have hundreds of scientists here, some of whom are working on um, planetary science, which means understanding the matter of space and also thinking about the different missions going out to search for life in our solar system and beyond and our, our scientists are involved in those missions. And you're also involved uh, in the NASA Perseverance rover. And uh, uh, behind us, uh, there is, this is the, the ExoMars rover. Yeah. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah, the Ro Rosalind Franklin, Franklin rover. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. So, how do this mission help uh, um, in complementary mm. um, work with uh, the, the, me uh, the Martian meteorites, uh, uh, but also directly to look for clues for life? Yeah, that's a great question. So, I'll sort of break it down into sort of three bits. So, in the Perseverance rover, the 
Mars 2020 rover, that has an amazing array of payload on it to analyse the chemistry and the mineralogy of the different samples that the rover is analysing and even more importantly is choosing to collect that one day we hope will, will come back to Earth so we can study, study those rocks um, in labs on Earth. So one of the amazing instruments on Perseverance is called Sherlock. It's a Raman and ultraviolet imaging system. And that instrument has been specifically designed to look for organic molecules within the rock samples. Because if you have organics, it doesn't mean to say there's definitely life or definitely was life, but it's a very good, again, very good marker or very good fingerprint as a potential biosignature. So I'm helping with the Sherlock instrument. And in fact, I mentioned about our amazing meteorite collection. One of our meteorites from the collection here is actually now back on Mars and it's being used as part of the calibration target for the Sherlock instrument, which is absolutely fantastic. So Perseverance is going around looking to find interesting rocks, the types of rocks that if there was life and if signs of that life has been preserved, those are the best places, those are the best types of rocks to retain that preservation. In three years time, in 2028, we're Looking forward to the launch of ESA's Rosalind Franklin rover. Rosalind Franklin, big UK involvement, designed and built in the UK. And there's a lot of UK science involvement with the payload and also the looking at the scientific data when it starts to return it. And Rosalind Franklin has a unique capability, unlike anything that's ever been to Mars. So you can see the, the, black, the black thing on the front that's actually the drilling mechanism. And Rosalind Franklin has the capability to drill down two meters into the Martian surface. So that will be the deepest ever drilled on Mars. And if there is life on Mars today, and there is a chance that there could still be life on Mars, it's not gonna be right at the surface. It's gonna be deeper down, protected from that harsh environment of Martian surface that's being bombarded by ultraviolet and solar radiation. So any life, any microbial life will have gone deeper down. That's where it will be at depth. And we've got capabilities of Rosalind Franklin within its scientific payload to actually make detections of extant life, so present life, if it is there and if they can find it. So really exciting time in Mars exploration. Absolutely. And uh, on that note, uh, if you were a betting person oh. and uh, you needed to consider a world outside Earth in the solar system mm -hmm. for life to be, where would you pick? Oh, that's a good one. I think personally, I'm most excited about the icy moons around Jupiter and Saturn. So there are these worlds that have these icy crusts. Uh, but deep beneath them, there are these liquid oceans and there's the potential for life to exist in those oceans. I would go for one of the icy moons of Jupiter or Saturn. And so that's the kind of, uh, I guess, next stage of this exploration is to understand those oceans better. So these ocean worlds with a protective icy crust, maybe a rocky crust and an ice mixture, but underneath good chance that you've got liquid water and liquid water is something you need for life and if you think about the discoveries that have been made even in the last 40 or 50 years about the diversity of life in the deepest oceans of the earth far away from sunlight you know people never thought there'd be anything life down there and and yet these these areas sometimes are teeming with life you could have the same things happening on the on the icy worlds and that's why ESA and NASA have both sent missions very recently to go and study those, those moons in far more detail and look for things like those physical and chemical biomarkers of potential life. So if, you, if I had to put a bet on, it would be one of the icy moons of Jupiter or Saturn. You can find out all of this and more in this Natural History Museum exhibition, Space, Could Life Exist Beyond Earth? on now.